Hi, welcome to class 10 managing the installed base to capture the inherent value in the market. This is the 10th class in the MSA servitization module. Open again. What did you learn last week? Now today, what are we going to learn? I want to understand what is the installed base. What is this word? It's pretty obvious once you get used to it and there's some maths behind it as well and a lot of hard work. What can we learn from it? Lots. We're going to understand how then to use it as a key resource. We're also going to have a look at managing obsolescence within the installed base, because that is critical. Um, it can be very difficult to maintain. So we're now into part three, service delivery for value capture. As usual, watch the video on YouTube. Um, great video, um, great examples. Talk about what you already know and share it and upload it onto the uh, server. So what do you understand about the installed base? Where is the equipment that we sold? Is it being used? How is it being used? How close is it to our local service centers? Do we have names and addresses for everything? Very, very simple. Where's the equipment? This is from um, Google Maps. There's no excuse anymore knowing where it is. I must have a name and address. I need to know where it is. It's not as easy as you think it is. A lot of equipment actually travels. Um, I always recommend that you say you need this for export control reasons. The question I've got is how many OEMs actually know this? Not so many. Lots of them don't know, and that's a big issue. So. Stick your name on it, put a QR code on it, put a phone number on it. This is the way that you capture it. It's particularly difficult if it's installed by somebody else could be a million miles away from you. How do you deal with it? How do you get hold of it? Make sure you know where every last piece of equipment is. The data is out there. Um, this is marine traffic. You can go and have a look at it. Plats give you data. Um, there's lots of systems out there which people use. Just because you haven't got it doesn't mean that you shouldn't start. Please, please, please start. Now then, what do we learn from the installed base? Improved sales, spare parts leads, failed quotes. We know where stuff is that could be supported by us. We get experience in the customer base, customer intimacy. And we know where to put our service centers. That's quite cool. Now, I've got an equation. The install base, number of units, that is, times the utilization, times the expected spend per year, gives you an expected service sales in aggregate. It'll be wrong for every location, but in aggregate, it's about right. So using that equation, what can we learn? We understand what the whole market looks like because we know how many pieces of equipment are out there with about our expected spend per year. We can also see how much of that pie we've got. We can see whether customers have been faithful to us. We can understand the operation, we can understand spares. Why are they high, why are they low? How much should they be using? Um, I'm really trying to map out the customer's budgeting process for the equipment that they bought. So I understand how they're using it, where they're using it, and how much money I should be getting from them. Expected spend, take an average 12 year, 15 year. Um, understand the cost drivers within it. That helps you understand it. That actually helps you do new, new equipment sales too gives you options to increase or decrease supply, provides benchmarking. Um, so think about what you could learn from that. The installed base is a key resource there. We're going to talk for 10 minutes, think about it for 10 minutes. List three reasons why it's a key resource and give me three reasons why firms don't use it as a key resource. Now, obsolescence. You know where your equipment is. Now, things become obsolete. Um, Boeing have an exceptionally good website on this currently, on the B-52 bomber. Um, I like it because it's very, very well documented. Um, I'm going to look at it from the manufacturer's point of view, the owner operator's point of view, cradle-to-grave life management, and the service opportunities that that gives us. Obsolescence, look it up on Wikipedia. Great definition. Very, very simple and very straightforward. B-52, um, big bomber, first flew in 1952. 
and they're going to extend its life and extend its life and extend its life again. Old airplane, what does it mean? Look at this document um, from the uh, US. Um, really, really interesting in terms of the spends that they've got. From the manufacturer's perspective, perfect. Introduce, manufacture, withdraw. Um, perfect product. Matches that product life cycle. Operational life was estimated to be 20 years. Um, but now it's quite a little bit older than 20 years. And it has a strategic bomber role. Now, it's been flying over 65 years. It was going to go to 80, 90, could go to 100 years because they're now talking about um, putting new engines into it to make it quieter and more fuel efficient. So the life cycle analysis, if you imagine um, deploy, we've done that, manage and support, evolve and maintain and retire. Those green and the gray box are long. Orders of magnitude longer than the other boxes in there. Really important to think about it on that basis. We keep evolving it. It keeps being maintained. It keeps evolving. From the owner operator's point of view, it's got lots of different missions. It's never dropped a bomb on Moscow, which was its primary role. Um, but it's done lots of other things. It's been obsolete. It needs to talk to other systems. It needs to have other systems in there which make sure it's friend or foe. It's got new bombs going through it. No more is this large nuclear bomb in there, but it's got um, cartridges for Tomahawk cruise missiles. It's completely different aircraft now. Imagine what a computer looked like in 1952. Some of them have been retired, but it's going to keep going. The current was 2040, but it may go further than 2040. That's getting kind of crazy. That's like a hundred year old airplane still flying. So there's a lot to do. There's a lot of spend. Basic maintenance spend and upgrade spend all the way through to help support the obsolescence. Some of the obsolescence is caused by the technology. Some of the obsolescence is caused because suppliers go bust. Some of it's caused because we need to be able to talk to other aircraft. How do we look at this? Look at the CAPEX and the OPEX cycle. It's a great way to look at it. What's happened to changes in mission during the operational life? They've evolved. What's changed in terms of technology? Break it into mission and technology changes. Think about the customer jobs, the gains and the pains that they suffer from. Very simple. This is why I like using the Osgevald approach. Very straightforward. Ask what it needs to do. And you can actually track that over the time. Then you can build solutions against it. Think about every upgrade. Every upgrade has to make it more valuable. Therefore, every upgrade has to have a customer value proposition against it. But it's a service opportunity. Stuff gets older. This happens with all capital assets. We have an opportunity there to improve it. And you can see, it's very predictable. It's basically on a GDP cycle not on the capex cycle that we see. It's very, very predictable business. Capabilities to support obsolete equipment is potentially a money maker as well. If we're the only guys on the block that can support that, even though we're not the manufacturer, we're in a winning position there. And you have to think about it more, broad, more widely than you did in the past. Think about it as a circular economy. We have a platform which we change stuff out on and put back in. How do we allocate risks on this? How do we do that in advanced services? Can I pay for the obsolescence um, support as an extra fee, as effectively as a subscription model? A little bit like Office. I now pay for it per month, so I've always got the latest version. Okay, let's close. A little picture of people getting older and dying. Same with machines. Manufacturer's point of view, too short term. Manufacturing cycles based. The manufacturer needs to understand the owner's point of view of the equipment and how to keep that up, updated. 
Cradle to grave life cycle management needs to be a joint task. Both parties need to take responsibility for it. Obsolescence provides a service opportunity. And we've used the B52 there as a really good example of how that of how that works. So closing for the class, you understand the install base, you've seen what we can learn from it. We've looked at obsolescence in the install base and then how to make money from it. So therefore it becomes a key resource. Thanks very much.